NAF helicopter crashes in Port Harcourt. Gunmen attack INEC residents' electoral commissioner in Kogi. Kaduna police arrest eight kidnapped suspects. And from the foreign scene, 14 Palestinians killed in Israeli strikes since week-long truce expired. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us in all the details. A Nigerian Air Force helicopter crashed in Port Harcourt, the River State's capital, on Friday morning. NAF spokesman Edward Gapquet confirmed the development in a statement. He said all those on board survived, though they sustained minor injuries and are being attended to at NAF Medical Center, Port Harcourt. The helicopter with the number NAF MI-35P crashed at exactly 7.45 a.m. around just shortly after it took off for an operation against economic saboteurs in River State. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says that gunmen have attacked the residents of its residential or resident electoral commissioner, REC, in Lokoja, Kogi State. The commissioner in a communique said the attack happened around 3.30 a.m. on Friday, December 1st, adding that the incident occurred a day after a mob besieged INEC office in the state. It noted that the armed men engaged security personnel in a gun battle for over 30 minutes until reinforcement arrived. The commissioner called for a thorough investigation and enhanced security protection for its personnel and assets in Kogi State. The Kaduna State Police Command has arrested persons for their alleged involvement in kidnapping and armed robbery in various parts of the state. The spokesman of the command, Mansir Hassan, said that the suspects were arrested by security operatives in their hideouts in Nuba Farm. In a Thursday statement, he said preliminary investigation reveals that the suspects were responsible for the kidnapping of the organized, organizing secretary of the All Progressive Congress in Kaduna, Kawia Kasai, at Soba local government area on August 25th and another victim, Adam Momoazu, recently. The police spokesman identified the suspect as Bello Suleiman, Ismail Abubakar, Usman Suleiman, Umar Suleiman, and Isa Lawal, all from Farankasa village in Soba local government area of Kaduna State. Others were Abubakar Bello, Ibrahim Moazu, and Umar Suleiman. Hassan also disclosed that the leader of the kidnapping syndicate, Juan Hanazua, is at large and has been trailed by security agencies while the arrested suspect will be arraigned in court upon completion of investigation. Equara State High Court sitting in Ilorin, the state capital, has sentenced the Sarkin Fulani of Kwara, Usman Adamu, his brother, and one Gedadu Idris to live imprisonment for conspiracy to kidnap and kidnapping. The convicts were accused of abducting one Abubakar Ahmed and allegedly collecting a ransom of one million naira before his eventual release after spending 20 days in captivity. The kidnap incident happened in the middle of last year. In her judgment, Justice Adenike Akinpelu said the trio all agreed to committing the crime, adding whether they were physically present at the kidnap scene was immaterial. She said the convict supposedly arrested their victim, claiming that he was a kidnapped suspect to extort money from him. There was the kidnap a boy, the kidnap a man, and one Abu. He was kidnapped, and after he was after his kidnap, uh, uh, he was taken to to Sobi Barracks. So the defendants here, the uh, parties to how the ransom was collected and paid. So in fact, they even share from the proceed of uh, that uh, ransom. So the main uh, uh, accused, who is a military officer, is nowhere to be found. 
So uh, I'm sure the state is still trailing him. But the other people who benefited from that act of kidnapping by sharing the money they have his contact. In fact, one of them collected his he sent his account number to one of the defendants today, the conflict today. He sent his account number to them. It was at the point of paying to his account at the POS point that he was snapped by the officers of uh, DSS. The residents of Yola, the Adamawa state capital, have advocated the need for security agencies to find a formal way of resolving disagreements instead of resorting to confrontation. They, however, queried the Inspector General of Police alongside the Chief of Army Staff over the recent clash of their men that led to the loss of lives and injuries of personnel in the state. Silas Lowen has the report. The last week invasion of the police quarter guard by soldiers left one inspector Jacob Daniel died. The army had accused policemen of shooting and injuring a soldier at a checking point and also taking the injured soldier away, thereby sparking a conflict between soldiers and policemen in the state on Wednesday. The incident left residents worried that if those responsible for protecting their lives and property could engage in such confrontation, there was no guarantee that ordinary citizens were safe. It is indeed not a welcome idea to find gentlemen, respected military officers behaving this way. It is also unexpected of a police officer to shoot a colleague. But look at the circumstances that happened. Our hearts bleed for our dear state Adamawa and if this thing continues in Nigeria, the respect we have for this institution will come down. And we expect that in civilized societies the world over, security forces have a very excellent synergy. And that's what they call themselves, you know, uh, Expedite de Corps. We expect that there's nothing like this can happen. I cannot see tanks moving from a barrack to a police headquarter simply because you have one incident. Even though the matter was quickly addressed by the state government to avoid further loss of lives and properties, this entire episode may not have gone well in the eyes of those at the highest level of authority. It's unfortunate that it has happened. Otherwise, the team spirit and the collaboration, the joint patrol that the police in the state and the army have been having was so cordial. That is why Adama State today is one of the safest states in the northern Nigeria, or I could say even in Nigeria. This incident should not demoralize our officers. We are not at war with any agency of government. What happened, happened. And I know that the military authorities are also not happy with it. I don't want this to dampen your spirit. Please go about your normal duties. They condemned the attack and called for calm among security personnel to ensure peace and development in the state. This, the Nigerian army to be clean, the police to be clean, and our society will be clean. So long as we continue looking at down on each other, we cannot. This country, we cannot succeed by give and take. There is no section that is superior to the other. So I want to believe that, please, let us respect ourselves. And the tenant of democracy is respect for one another, making sure that your life, your territory where you walk, is as, as, as important as the other person's territory. If you don't respect his own territory, he will never love you. And I want to believe that without unity, this country will be in pieces. So if our security forces are not united, then trouble awaits us. While normalcy has since returned to the state, residents have been urged to continue with their normal activities and not to be discouraged by the incident. Silas Lewin, Trust TV News, Yola. In the FCT, the minister Yesum Wike has presented a supplementary budget for the FCT before the Senate and House of Representatives Committee of the National Assembly. The budget, which is for the 2023 fiscal year, is to the tune of 61 billion naira. Habib Atajayi reports. 
The Hep City Minister, while defending the 2023 statutory supplementary budget before the National Assembly Committees, called on them to give it expeditious approval and promised that the FCT will witness the commissioning of several projects next year. The FCT 2023 supplementary statutory budget proposal submitted by the President, which was read on the 28th November 2023, at the sitting of the Senate, and the same data was transmitted to the Committee on the FCT for further legislative action. The Speaker of the House, Tajidi, read a letter from the President and Commander in Chief, requesting the House to approve a supplementary statutory budget of the FCT to the tune of 61 billion. The committee decided to invite you with your team to give us details and why this one is to be decided the, the agencies and the agencies under you for utilization. Recollect that some time ago, as I present presented supplementary project which FCT on the national budget was given 100 billion. The chairman, if you look at that document, we did specify what that 100 billion would be used for. One of such is the electro line security. And of course, to manufacture among the six area councils. The Minister for that clarified the FCT 2023 supplementary budget differs from the national supplementary budget presented by President Bola Tinobu, where the sum of 100 billion naira was allocated to the FCT to carry out national projects like the Metro Line and some other road projects. In another development, the FCT Minister Yesom Wiki has directed the Federal Capital Development Authority to provide infrastructures in areas earmarked for the construction of residential buildings for judges in Katampe, noting that the construction will not commence without the necessary infrastructure. We went to Katampe area where we are trying to provide, um, you remember we said, we are going to build uh, accommodation for the judges of the Federal High Court. We also did say we are going to build for judges of the City High Court. And we are also going to build for the justices of the Court of Appeal of Abuja Division. And uh, as part of it, we have to go and see the site. And we found that, that the infrastructure is there to be provided. And which has uh, made us to direct the FCD to quickly uh, see that we provide the infrastructure so that um, we can start the residential buildings. The minister noted that the projects will be funded by the internally generated revenue and funds from the financial institutions. Habibat Ajayi, Trust TV News, Abuja. The federal government has released 150 inmates sentenced to various terms of imprisonment with the option of fine or compensation in custodial centers in Kenya State out of the 4,068 nationwide. The Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjiojo, while talking of the exercise at the Kenya Maximum Security Custodial Center, says the patterns is in a bid to decongest the custodial centers and make them humane for proper reformation and rehabilitation of offenders to take place. Trust TV's correspondent Idris Jabrin reports that 13.4 million naira has been spent for the release of inmates in Kano alone. His report. These are inmates who were convicted and sentenced for various minor crimes, most of whom were on the verge of their freedom and are indigent who cannot afford to pay their fines. According to the Interior Minister, the sum of 585 million naira was raised by philanthropic individual, groups and corporate bodies as part of their social responsibility. For these purposes nationwide, 
out of which the sum of 13 million 436,780,000 Naira was spent in Kanu State. As we all know, custodial centers nationwide are congested. The federal government, therefore, recently launched a program aimed at reducing custodial centers congestion. This initiative, through fire fed and compensation, has already made a significant impact on the lives of various inmates across the country. Releasing these prisoners, according to authorities, is in line with President Tinubu's renewed hope agenda, which include giving hope to benefiting inmates to get back on track and contribute to the ongoing development of the nation. 4,068 inmates are being granted their freedom through payment of fines, and among them, we here in Kano proudly recognize the release of 150 inmates who can now rejoice in the reunion with their loved ones. For the Interior Ministry, the inmates are required to see this as a second chance to make things right by keeping away from all forms of criminal activities. The idea is to renew the hope of being hopeless. Who don't know that they can get this kind of thing? Not extending the gesture of the president. He renewed the hope and their hope for life again. So to bring them out, integrate them back to the society and so that they enjoy freedom and life with all of us. With the massive congestion of the custodial centers nationwide, the federal government is therefore advised to sustain this compensation program as a way of reducing prison congestion across the country. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. With the present cost of premium motor spirits between 640 and 700 naira in Makodi and the consequent rise in transportation fares, Makodi residents said traveling from one destination to another has become a luxury. To survive this situation, they have adopted some basic strategies. Jimmy Adzande has the details. At the motor parks, there's a lack of the usual movement of passengers. The residents explained that most of them travel out only when it becomes unavoidable. One of the strategies they said is delivering goods through where be, which to them is more affordable. The where be we do at the rate of 2,000 naira, 3,000 naira, now they are charging us 6,000 naira, 7,000 naira, which is abnormal. Then where you are transport from your house to, to the park, you will pay huge amount of money. Transport of 100 naira now is 200 naira. Uh, some people okay. like me now, I do pay 150 to come down here on bike, but today I pay 250 naira to come down here. So the situation is not that easy. But I believe gradually things will get better. Then from Okene to Makode, and before they were collecting 3,005 before. But yesterday it was um, 7,000. So everything was double. So people are um, getting it too hard. So the country, I don't know where we are heading to. It is six months since the fourth subsidy removal crisis began. Some of the residents are yet to come to terms with the realities. Actually, I came here thinking that um, it's the usual price I do take home. But all of a sudden, I was shocked to discover that it's almost times two of the normal price and uh, the money I'm holding here with me is not more up to the amount they are calling me. So I'm just so stranded right now. Transport company owners are lamenting poor patronage, which they said is a threat to their businesses. Before now, we, our transport fare was 8,000 and we could balance well with the price of 8,000. But since the subsidy river, it has become difficult. But this time is a very difficult time for passengers and, and uh, company owners. Even with some cut down on transport fare by the state on Benue links, 
residents told Trust TV that the usual movement to the Yuletide season should not be expected this year. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. From the foreign scene, now fighting resumed in Gaza on Friday immediately after the expiry of a week-long truce between the Israel and Hamas, with the first fat fatalities reported minutes later, according to health officials in the Palestinian territory. At least 14 Palestinians were killed and dozens who more were injured in Israeli strikes during the first two hours since the truce in Gaza expired. Ashraf Al-Kidra, the spokesman for Gaza's health ministry, said on Friday, according to the ministry's Telegram account. An AFP TV live cam showed a heavy cloud of grey smoke rolling over northern Gaza and apparent sounds of automatic weapons, fire and explosions within the first 90 minutes after the truce expired at 0500 GMT. In the hour before the truce was set to end, Israel said it intercepted a rocket fired from Gaza and Hamas-affiliated media reported sounds of explosion and gunfire in the Palestinian enclave. The seven-day pause, which began on November 24 and was extended twice, had allowed for the exchange of dozens of hostages held in Gaza for hundreds of Palestinian prisoners and facilitated the entry of humanitarian aid into the enclave. And with that, we wrap up news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.